I went to see a doctor. He told me I'm allergic to boilerplate coat. There was only one cure, it's felt kit. I tried it and I loved it because, oh boy, look at that. So much less code. And it's so easy to read. It claims to be fast, fun and flexible. Let's put that to the test. What's up YouTube? It's time to explore SvelteKit, a meta framework that utilizes Svelte just as how Next.js utilizes React for example. Along the way we're going to build this gallery app and you're going to like how fast it will go. We'll discuss the following topics. The SvelteKit basics, who would have thought? Think of state management, stores, routing, service side rendering, creating an API, adding transitions and more. We'll add lazy and progressive image loading, dark mode, smooth page transitions, mocking API requests so that we can run our app without any internet connection. And we'll include some serious good testing using unit, component and end-to-end -end tests. Now SvelteKit is great at what it does, but not at other things like building and testing. So we'll need tools for that. I want to be a happy developer, so I'm going to choose tools that I actually love to use. And I'm sure you'll love it too. Let's get started. Once we have Node.js and VS Code installed, we can create a blank SvelteKit project with whatever name you want to give it. Choose a skeleton project which will keep the project as clean as possible. Add TypeScript for type checking and select all additional options for code linting, code formatting and unit and browser testing to guarantee a consistent coding style and to detect potential errors and violations. Go to the project, install the dependencies and run the development server. Congratulations, you can now call yourself a SvelteKit professional. I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fan of the looks of this skeleton project. Project. It looks kind of skeletty, but before we're going to work on that, let's first see what files are in our project. All right, we got some configuration files for the different tools we installed, static files for things like images, nothing too interesting yet, an end-to-end -end test file, which is just a placeholder for now, the root app files, which are really basic as well, placeholder unit test file as well, a plus page file, an empty index file, and wait, that's it? Nice. So let's start at the beginning, which is app.html. All our code gets injected into this page via these placeholders. Let's not mess with this file. The app.d.ts file is meant to extend some of the SvelteKit internal interfaces. Then we have the lib folder, which is a regular folder, except that you can import from it using the dollar sign lib alias. And then we have the plus page.svelte file. And that's where most of the magic happens. The plus indicates that it's a route file. The complete route is defined by the directories of your codebase. There are several reserved file names in SvelteKit and we'll handle them later on. For now let's open that file and you'll see that the content is literally only HTML. There's no need to export or anything. But next to HTML we can of course do more in a Svelte file. To implement some basic state management just create a script tag with a variable in it. SvelteKit will automatically track change and re-render when necessary. Reference the variable in your HTML using curly brackets and let's for now add some basic CSS styling using the style tag. Important to note is that styling is scoped to the component so you don't have to worry about messing up styling in other components. Listening to events is also super easy. Use the on directive followed by the name of the event and you're done. Now look at that, I say it's ready for production. Now scope styling is awesome, but I'm more of a Tailwind person myself and installing Tailwind in SvelteKit is as easy as subscribing to the channel. Let's make it a race and see who finished first. While you are subscribing, I'm gonna run the Svelte add Tailwind CSS command and install the newly added dependencies. And we're done. So who won? Let me know in the comments. You'll see two new configuration files for the Tailwind and post CSS and a new plus layout file. Now this is another reserved file name which adds a layout to the components in this directory and all its subdirectories. The slot component is a reference to the component that should actually render on this page. Going back to the actual page file, let's replace the styles with Tailwind classes and you'll see everything still works. First replace the styles of the div, which we use to center the content. Then replace the style of the button, which we use to create the cookie effect. And lastly replace the styling of the span, which we use to increase the font size. Now hopefully you see how fast this is going. Our app is still looking as good as it was before, so that means Tailwind is configured correctly. That's it for this video, see you in the next one.